Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is always a pleasure to have you on the program, His Word, where we read the Word of God and get to hear what the Lord, our God, is saying to us. I'm Tom Gostube, and I love the Lord God Almighty. Basically, I can say I'm a Christian and I believe in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. We are looking into the Word today. We are looking into partially trusting God because as human beings, sometimes we don't fully trust God and that has some negative effects in the way we do things as we walk on earth or in our journey in the Christian faith. We are looking into that. I trust that the Word of God will change you today to fully or to put your 100% trust in the Lord such that you can get the best from God because He has the best for all humanity and for all who put their trust in Him for He knows those who have their faith only in Him. I believe the word is going to bless you. May you be blessed today. We shall read the Bible even today in the name of Jesus Christ. The title of the message is Dangers of Partially Trusting God. Dangers of Partially Trusting God. We shall read the Bible from the second book of Chronicles. We shall read chapter 25. I'll start from verse 1 to 10. Only 10 verses. Maybe some of you, they ask, why should we read the word uh, like this? The purpose is that it has authority. The word of God has authority on its own. Reading it on its own is just revealing that whatever we are doing centers around God and around his word. Amen. I will read from the NIV. Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Johadan. She was from Jerusalem. She did was the, sorry, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not all Heartedly. After the kingdom was firmly in his control, he executed the officials who had murdered his father, the king. Yet he did not put their children to death, but acted in accordance with what is written in the law, uh, in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, parents should not be put to death for their children, nor children be put to death for their parents. Each will die for his own sin. Amaziah called the people of Judah together and assigned them according to their families to commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds of all Judah and Benjamin. He then mustered those 20 years old and more and found that there were 300,000 men fit for military service. Able to handle the spear and shield, he also hired a hundred thousand fighting men from Israel for a hundred talents of silver. But a man of God came to him and said, Your Majesty, these troops from Israel must not march with you, for the Lord is not with Israel, not with any of the people of Ephraim. Even if you go and fight courageously in battle, God will overthrow you because uh, before the enemy, for God has power to help and to overthrow. Amaziah asked the man of God, But what about the hundred talents I paid for these Israelite troops? The man of God replied, The Lord can give much more than that. So Amaziah dismissed the troops who had come to him from Ephraim and sent them home. They were furious with Judah and left for home in great range. Father, we thank you for your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Through your spirit, God, may it nourish us our souls and let us hear what you are saying to us in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things that we hear of today, mostly in the sport uh, paternity, is what is referred to as doping. When you're talking about doping, it is where a sports person uh, uses drugs just to enhance the performance. There are quite a number of stories that we read about in terms of dope, uh, doping where athletes will use whatever drugs just to enhance whatever they are doing. 
Now, I just want to quote uh, one gentleman who actually did this, is Bert Johnson. He was uh, part of the athletic team in 1988 in Canada, and he was a Canadian. He was part of an Olympic uh, team, and he was running in South Korea in that year. Olympics were in South Korea. So he was able to run to outpace one of the United States known runner by the name of uh, Carl Will Le Lewis or Lewis. So he was able to outpace him because he was using drugs. Unfortunately, when he was discovered that he was using drugs for running as f uh, faster than the other people, he was then convicted. Then he was supposed to hand over the gold medal he had received to the second runner. He lost that. And we know very well that in running or in sports, there's quite a lot of sponsorship that is there. There was sponsorship that he would have received as the first position, but because he had uh, done malpractice, he was fined and he was not supposed to receive those sponsorships. So he lost the medal and he lost also whatever sponsorship was he was entitled to. Why? Because of doping. Doping happens because maybe you don't trust you will perform well for many reasons that you think will enhance your performance. So as Christians, we see some of these things in, uh, in the lives of the king. So we will get down to that. Now, if we look at this king by the name of Amaziah, he was the king of Judah. As a king in Judah, he, was, he, he had an army that God had given to him. That is Judah and the Benjaminite. So he had an army that he was able to use to fight, or he was his army as a king. But he felt like, you see, my army is not really strong enough. I don't trust my army. Let me just add another uh, uh, team of people that I trust who are, are very, very strong to boost my army. And he did that. Whilst he did that, the man of God, God had to send his men to talk to him about whatever was happening in his life. But I want us to draw closer to what acts of partiality, of partial in faith that we see in this man. When you read uh, uh, verse 2, it says that he was a man who feared God, but in his fear of the Lord, he was not wholeheartedly serving God. We know this kind of thing in our lives where people, they trust God, but they are not 100% in trusting God. Now, what we see as a, an element of not trusting God, actually, because what draws you to, to act in some, in some instances is because you don't trust God or you don't trust whoever is leading you. But in this case, we are talking of God. Now, we are talking about avigence or revengeance. He was able to fight or to kill those who killed his father. He was revenging of what had happened to his life. When you are someone who is broken or someone who is in a position where you have, we are in a position where you actually are not trusting God, you find yourself that you have to do things on your own. So when you do things on your own, there is a reason. You actually feel like God is not going to fight this battle the way I want him to. Assume you are mistreated in whatever you are doing, and you feel so low, and you feel like you have been mistreated. Something better should have been done to you. Now, what we learn here is that Amaziah waited for the opportunity where he got a, a position or he got into power. And when he got into power, he was able to fight. Now, what does that mean? In our lives, we understand that we also go through quite a lot of things. Sometimes we are mistreated, but it depends on what you do when you get power. Do you really trust that God is going to fight your enemies? There are some verses that I want us to know because God says, virgins is mine. I am the one who's going to repay the wrong that I have done unto you. So if you have faith in God, you are able to, work, to wait on the word of God like uh, the, the verse in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35. It says, it is mine to avenge. I will repay. In due time, their foot will sip. Their day of disasters is near and their doom rushes upon them. What does that mean? God will avenge whatever you are going through. You might have been mistreated in whatever you are going through, but God is the one who repays whatever they have done badly or 
unfairly to you. If you read Exodus 14, verse 14, the Lord says, or Moses says to Israel, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Amen. Those are challenges that we face as people where you have to wait patiently for the Lord to deliver you in whatever situation you are going through. So it is only in faith in God where you trust God that he's going to avenge whatever you are going through. But lack of faith or not being 100% in God, you tend to think, let me do something to repay whatever they did for me to me. That's a challenge that we see in this king. It was because he had no trust in God. He was not wholeheartedly in the Lord that led him to say, no, let me revenge to those who killed my father. So let's not revenge. Let's trust God that he's going to revenge. or he, Vengeance is all his. He's going to fight our battles. The other thing that we see is because of not serving God, God whole, wholeheartedly, sorry, it was because it brings something like partiality in doing his word. In the very same verses that we read, we read that this man of God, after killing those who killed his father, he understood that the law of Moses does not permit someone to kill the parent and the kids for the sins of the parents. So time and again in our lives, if we are a person who does not 100% trust God, you find that there are things that you will obey in the word of God as long as it favors you. But when it is of benefit not to obey the word of God, you get into it. That's a challenge of not wholly trusting God. Ephesians 4 verse 25 says, Therefore each one of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to their neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Why am I quoting this? One of the things that people do is that we know that sin is not allowed if you are not a Christian. Is it not? We are not expected to lie, but we sometimes justify ourselves that to save the situation I had to lie. This is something that we do. If maybe you are rushing somewhere and you are late, you tend to say, no, let me just say, tell a lie and I will be in a safe position. People do that. But God does not permit that. So if you are not wholeheartedly to God, there are some verses that you will think that are not relevant to your life. Let the whole Bible to be relevant to you, not when the condition is, con uh, is conducive or if you feel you are going to benefit. So as Christians, let's avoid partiality in trusting God. It is evident, actually, in the way people conduct their lives, the way we do things. If you are not fully trusting God, we will just see by the way you act. You will revenge and you will also use some of the words of God for your own benefit and actually go overboard where you think it works for you. Now, the lack of trust in God also makes us to seek self-defense because if you are not sure that God can protect you in whatever you are going through, you will always think there is something I should add. Now, we see this King Amaziah, although he's, the Bible says he, he had faith in God, However, his partial trust in God made him to seek self-defense. We are told he had 300,000 troops or men who could fight, but he decided to add 1,000, uh, 100,000. And in his addition, he also had to pay. Now, what is this thing all saying to us? I want to bring it closer uh, into our lives. God gives us whatever we need to do the work that he has assigned to us. In this case, he had given the king, the army, the people that were part of his, uh, his, uh, his, his tribe, the Judah and Benjamin. They were part of him. So he had about 300,000. I think that was a large uh, number of people to fight. But he felt, no, I think that we need something. He didn't value what God had given to him. God has given us, most of us, not most of us, all of us, he has given us something that he has put in our lives. He, has pr he provides protection for us. He provides a lot of things for us. But when you don't wholly trust God and you feel like God is not really uh, trustworthy, you will always think, I have to do something extra to add to this. Maybe we are not uh, used to that. Maybe let me assume we are all Christians here. But I will talk because this will be watched by people also that are not here. We know in the uh, uh, Swatini culture is that when a child is born, they have to 
I don't know what you call it, kupunyisa, and all this thing. Just to add the health of the child, those African things that we do, is actually not only in Eswatini, but it's an African worldview where we think we should add something to what is happening. That's why you will have some homes with those tall sticks uh, next to them where they say they protect them from the lightning. They don't trust that God will protect them. When you don't trust that God can actually protect you in life, you feel like, no, let me add this. Some of them, they'll go for your God just to make sure that they add to their protection. When the schools are opening, kids will go for your God and all those things. Why? Because they believe that they are adding security to whatever will happen in their lives. So if you don't wholly trust God, it will be evident by the things that you do. You'll always want to add on what God has given you or what has done for you. God's protection is enough to protect you from anything that you think can attack you, from evil spirits and even physical things. God will protect you. Amen. But we are tempted because of lack of faith in God. Now, we also read that, okay, it's the African worldview. Uh, sometimes uh, in the modern days, where we are, where people are actually looking for jobs, searching for jobs, doing quite a lot of things. Lack of faith in God also becomes evident in the way we do things. Unfortunately, we have seen that your own means have a limit. I will quote an incident of COVID. If you talk about COVID, people who had money, I mean, who had the best health care system, it wouldn't work for some of them. When you're supposed to die, you die, regardless of how much money you have invested in your health. We could see that doctors cannot save lives. It is only God who can save us as human beings. If you remember very well, in the European countries or the first world countries, there were quite a number of people who died from COVID. But God had grace on Africa. Quite a few number of people died. Yes, they died, but not as much as it was. And think of our health system in Africa. Most of our countries have a very, very weak uh, health care system. But God protected us because it was him who protects human beings. It's not that he doesn't o o protect the others, but I'm giving an illustration that God protects people. We live because God has allowed us to live. Amen. Let's not be tempted that it is our effort that makes us do what we are. Even at school, it's not our effort that makes us to pass in schools. Yes, it is good to study, but God actually is the one that opens your mind. Because even if you study so hard, but if God is outside in the time of writing the exam, you can forget everything. So we need to put our trust in God, 100% in God, and he is going to fight for us and he's going to give us victory in whatever we are doing. In 2 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 7, the man of God came to Amaziah and said, Your majesty, this troop from Israel must not march with you, for the Lord is not with Israel. Amen. Not with any of the people of Ephraim. What is actually happening here? God is actually saying to him, whatever you think you have accumulated to secure victory, it is not going to work for you. Whatever you have put around your life and whatever you have done to you that you think can actually add to your victory, it is not going to work. He had purchased these people and actually paid them a lot of money just to make sure that he, he wins. But when the man of God talked to him, fortunately, or what is good in what we learn is that he actually obeyed God. And the obedience meant that he would do what he has done. In other words, he just released the Israelites, the army that he had paid for. And then he asked, what will happen to the money that I've paid? Because you pay to add that extra protection. You pay to add that extra security or whatever you think is going to add value in your life. Whatever you think is going to make you succeed or whatever you think is going to add victory to your life. He had paid money. To, for that. And now he was, what, what are we going to do? And I like the words of, of the man of God. He said, God will overthrow you before you, the enemy, for God has power to help you and to overthrow. It's God who gives him victory, and it is God who is also going to repay all that you have spent. Amen. So God protects us. Let us trust whatever he has provided for us and not take it for granted. 
It is when we realize that God has put things in our lives. He has put value in us. He has protected us. He has given us a lot of things that we have. And we utilize whatever he, he, we have. Because the king would have easily utilized his 300,000 men, 300, men to fight. But he did not. The question is, what God has given you, do you actually utilize? Are you ut utilizing it in his service? Are you sure that God, when he says, I will protect me, you from attacks, from for evil uh, 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 demons and whatever. Are you sure that God is going to protect you? But lack of trust in God makes us to think I need extra security. Amen. We need to trust God. It is not our qualifications. It is not our, maybe your ACCA, your area, your medicine qualifications. That makes you to be able to make ends meet. But it is what the Lord is providing for you. I mean, we have seen people who hold high qualifications, even professors, they are living a miserable life. Why? Because they do not put their trust in God. Now, these are things that makes us, things that draw us to seek self-trust uh, of assistance. What makes us to seek self-trust? One of the things that makes us to want to add is where we fear the unknown. When we fear the unknown, they also call it uncertainty or you call it risk. Where do, where, where, when we read at this story, we don't even hear of a war that has, was coming to this king, Amaziah. But he just felt like, no, what if something happens? That's what happens. It leads us to seek self-trust if we just think of too much risk. What if this happens? Mm, let me protect myself. It leads us away to our faith in God. We have to put our trust in God. I don't want to dispute things like medical aid and everything, but those things, they have an effect to our level of faith because we tend to, ah, I feel sick, ah, let me go to see the doctor. But you don't, normally don't start with prayer, but you start with seeing the doctor. Now, I don't dispute going to a doctor. I also go to the doctor myself. But it is important that we involve God in our lives and pray. So let's not have self-seeking. Uh, the other thing that makes us to rush to self-trust is that we do not believe in what we have. As I've said, Amaziah did not have faith in his army. He wanted to uh, add something. The last one, which is very, very crucial, which is the core of the sermon, is the partial faith in God, where you do not trust God 100% that he is able to do what he said he will do. Amen. It's very, very difficult, I must say, to 100% trust God, but he wants that. One of the things that God likes in the way we relate to him is faith. And faith involves invisible things. And that's what God really likes. He likes it that way when you believe in what you don't see. But you just believe in him. If you believe that he is going to provide the next meal, if you, provide, you believe that he's going to give you whatever you are asking, you don't even have anything that you can say which is tangible, but you just have faith in God. That's what he likes. Amen. And he likes that we use what he has given to us. That is what we see from this man, Amaziah, the, 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 the army that he had given him. The talents God he has given to us, because God has given us talents. Each and every one of us has a talent. But unfortunately, modernization has actually made us to look down upon our talent. Some of us are given in cooking, but we think maybe I should go for an ACCA and be an accountant and I'll leave. But I want to call to you quite a number of people. There's this gentleman, of, 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 who, of the founder of KFC. Although he was late in his age, but he finally discovered his, uh, his dream. Look at how simple it is just to cook chicken. He specialized on that. And he's making millions and millions just cooking chicken. Some people have big companies that just prepare a maheu. Big companies. There are people, we can all brew and my hair, but they can never taste the same. Some are better than others. Why? They are gifted to that. God has given us different, 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 different things, but the life or uncertainty, lack of trust in God has made us to seek what is normal. It was normal for the king to say, let me get extra troops that will protect me. 
There are people who are gifted in music, but they feel, no, it's not enough. Let me still go and continue to learn. When I look at the life of the people uh, in first world countries, I really treasure because what they do because they value the talents that are there. You find that someone is just a specialist in drums. He's paid for that. He makes lots of money from that. Somebody is just a good cook, maybe for sandwiches. There's a big company that specializes just on that. Now, I'm drawn to, to, ta to talents, but I'm, I'm trying to say God has given us things that we are supposed to use. He has Put it, he has put these things in us and we need to have faith that God has given me this. I should put it to practice and I will succeed in life. When it comes to protection, God has provided angels. Somebody says, actually it's the Bible that says we've got some angels that are watching over us as the children of God. We are protected. We do not need some extra uh, that will make us more safer than what we are. Amen. We don't need to go for whatever, whatever addition that you think can boost whatever you are doing. You don't need to pay that extra money for your application to go through. Because you are a child of God. What God has put into you, it is going to succeed. The Bible says God knows those who fully trust him. He knows us. He knows those who, those who have put their trust in him. I encourage you and exhort each and every one of us to put our faith in God. Psalms 40, 146 says, verse 3, Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those, verse 5, blessed are those whose help is in God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Blessed are those who have their hope in the Lord their God. Let us hope, have our hope in God that he is going to protect us. What he has given us is enough. What he has provided is enough. He's going to do the good things for us as his children. Let us leave everything in his hands. When people succeed in faith, it is because it is God. Psalms 37 verse 7 says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes, because you never know what a person does to succeed. Be satisfied with what you have and be satisfied in what God puts before you and put your trust in him and you will get to your destination. Amen. Well, that's all we had for you today. I trust and believe that the word of God has ministered to you. And actually, it has changed your life now and your perception uh, on how to trust God. It is very important that as Christians, we fully trust God 100% and put no other trust on any other thing other than our Lord God Almighty. We have just learned about Amaziah. We actually even lost some money. And because he just wanted to add to the security that he felt was not enough yet god had given him enough authority or oh, security i'm sorry god has given you things in your life just put your faith in him trust him that he's going to lead you throughout this journey you might have paid for that extra security relax god is going to pay you back just you can still repent from what you are doing from, from the other faiths that you have to his alone and when you go to him Never mind about how, what you've spent and how much you've spent. He's going to restore that. What pleases God is that we fully trust him 100%. That's what he likes. He wants his children to have faith in him and him alone. I believe God has blessed you and your life has been changed for the better in Christ. I believe God willing we will meet next time and I trust that God may keep you and he will keep you throughout the week until we meet next time. God bless you.